Okay, since September of last year, despite being in a constant state of rotating between a multitude of different devices, the phone that I've used as my quote unquote daily driver that actually has my SIM card in it is this guy. You guessed it, the mighty and super posh iPhone 13 Pro Max. And look, this is an absolute beast of a phone, no doubt one of the best all-arounders in the game today, hence why it spent so much time in my pocket. But the other day, I decided that I wanted to switch things up kind of in a big way. And big might be a weird way to put it because rather than sticking with one of the largest phones in the market today, I'm gonna be switching to one of the smallest, the very polarizing iPhone 13 mini. Now, if you follow the channel at all, you know that I personally love this phone. I really think it's one of the most underrated devices out there. But let's face it, as someone who's been a max sized iPhone user since the very beginning, it's pretty jarring going from a behemoth like this to something so petite. So let's start with the why. Why would I want to do this? And it really comes down to three reasons. The first one being form factor, form factor, form factor. I think the biggest misconception with the iPhone 13 mini is that people assume that the size is gonna be a major flaw from a user experience standpoint. And look, that makes sense. The entire industry has been moving in the opposite direction, making their phones bigger and bigger. And considering just how much we rely on our devices for virtually everything, I think it's a totally fair assumption. But after using the iPhone 13 mini, and this might sound nuts, but trust me on this one, if you actually used it too, I can almost say with confidence that you'd understand that the size of the phone is in no way a flaw, it's actually the phone's greatest strength. People totally underestimate the value that a comfortable form factor brings to the table, and I could tell you with confidence that this is by far the most comfortable iPhone to date. It's lightweight, super easy to hold and operate in one hand. The flat frame with this size makes it a natural fit in the palm, and I can't stress how refreshing it is to be able to zoom around iOS one hand with this level of confidence. I seriously get hand fatigue using the 13 Pro Max. It's such a heavy phone that I even get uncomfortable just scrolling through social media after a short amount of time. Plus, the flat frame with these dimensions actually makes the phone harder to hold. You have to squeeze the phone tighter and the edge starts digging into your palm and it's only made more cumbersome when you're trying to reach apps or features in the corners. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, okay, yeah, it's a bit more uncomfortable, but it's worth it because of the bigger display, right? And though I will say having a bigger display is better for most cases and no doubt the display on the 13 Pro Max is fantastic, I think the important thing to take note of here is that the display on the 13 mini is also pretty freaking great. It's the same Super Retina HDR OLED panel that performs really well, and it's just immersive enough to make consuming content very enjoyable. The edge-to-edge -edge design makes up for the small dimensions, and I've never felt as though I'm using a quote-unquote small phone. So at the end of the day, by going with the 13 mini, I get the best of both worlds. A phone where I can get a lot more done faster and easier and a lot more comfortably, while still enjoying a very immersive and pleasing user experience. Now, before we get into the second reason on why I'm switching from the iPhone 13 Pro Max to the 13 mini, I wanna give a big shout out to today's video sponsor, Simply Carbon Fiber. Simply Carbon Fiber is an industry leader when it comes to accessories, and they make some of the best iPhone cases in the game today. Like check out their ghost case that I have here for the iPhone 13 Pro. It's unbelievably lightweight coming in at just nine grams. And the ultra thin profile makes this one of the most unobtrusive cases I've ever used. It's made out of a super stealthy looking armored fiber. And what I love about it is that it has this matte rubberized coating that makes the iPhone so much easier to grip. Now, if you're looking for serious drop protection, their Forged Carbon Fiber Armor Series case is an absolute beast. You can see from these extreme drop tests that this case is no joke. It's made out of 100% authentic Forged Carbon Fiber, not the fake stuff that so many others try and pawn off. And the difference in quality is super noticeable. It has this rugged tire tread like frame that provides ultimate grip and because it's carbon fiber, you get the extreme toughness while still maintaining a very light footprint. If you guys are interested in snagging up either of these cases for your iPhone, Simply Carbon Fiber is hooking you guys up. Just use the link in the description and use code JSL10 at checkout and you'll get 10% off your order. Get the premium protection your phone deserves. Check out Simply Carbon today. Okay, the second reason why I'm switching from the iPhone 13 Pro Max to the 13 mini is an important one, and that's the fact that there aren't many compromises when it comes to features and performance. In fact, I'd say that the 13 mini can do 95% of what the 13 Pro Max could do. It's that similar. And even where there are differences, I wouldn't consider any of them make or break. To start, both phones are equipped with Apple's premier A15 Bionic chipset, arguably the most powerful mobile processor in the market today, so you get an equally fast and smooth user experience on the 13 mini. 
I mentioned earlier that both phones are equipped with OLED panels, so no compromises when it comes to screen resolution. Now, one noteworthy difference is that the 13 Pro Max does come with Apple's 120Hz ProMotion technology, so navigating around the UI is going to be super buttery smooth. And I'm not going to lie, I love ProMotion, and it's probably going to be the thing that I miss the most when flipping to the 13 mini. But the standard 60Hz display on the iPhone has always performed really well, and for the here and now, I'd be willing to concede ProMotion if it does mean better ergonomics. Now, the other notable difference is no doubt going to be battery life, and that's mainly because the iPhone 13 Pro Max is rightfully considered the king in this category. If you start with 100% on this phone, you'd have to put in a concerted effort to try and drain it to zero before the day is out. You could easily get eight to eight and a half hours of screen on time, which is pretty insane. And look, there's no way around it. You're not going to get that type of crazy performance on the 13 mini. It's so much smaller physically, so there are limits to how big of a battery you can put in here. But in my testing, I've been averaging around seven hours of screen on time with this phone, which all things considered is pretty fantastic in my opinion. That's more than enough for me to get through a day comfortably, even on days of heavy use. And I feel pretty confident that I won't run into any hamstrings from a user experience standpoint, despite the smaller battery. And probably the most important area where you're honestly not gonna be making many compromises at all is what really makes the iPhone 13 mini great, and that's its camera quality. The images coming out of the 13 mini look almost identical to what's coming out of the 13 Pro Max. And a big reason for this is because it uses the same advanced image processing and computational photography tricks leveraged by the A15 Bionic, so you're still getting class leading pictures from the 13 mini. Now sure, you don't get a telephoto lens and the LiDAR sensor, two features that I personally can live without. And I think the thing that seals the deal for me here is that you not only get near identical performance when it comes to stills, it also applies to video. With the 13 mini, you can still have the undisputed best camera system for both front-facing and rear-facing video. And this is a huge deal considering how much short-form video has taken over the way that we communicate. You get the same 4K resolution as the 13 Pro Max at all the same frame rates, and the footage as expected looks exemplary. Now all these similarities kind of bring me to the third and last reason why I'm switching from the iPhone 13 Pro Max to the 13 mini, and that's to save a ton of money. Okay, well maybe not me personally because as a tech reviewer, I'm likely gonna have to hold onto both phones for a while, but from a normal consumer perspective, there is a significant financial incentive going with the 13 mini. As the phone has a starting price of $699, it's the cheapest iPhone 13 in the lineup, but it's arguably the best value because it's so feature rich. And when you compare that to the $1,099 starting price of the 13 Pro Max, you really need to start asking yourself, is the price differential worth the minuscule differences? Well, in order to be fair, I'm not gonna definitively answer that question yet, but what I am gonna do is take my SIM card out of the 13 Pro Max, gonna put this beast in storage, and I'm gonna officially make the 13 mini my go-to phone. Now, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel because because after some time, I am gonna do a follow-up to let you all know honestly if this change was worth it. But let me know what you guys think. Do you think I'm making a huge mistake or do you agree with me? Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below. Okay, that's about it for this review. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you guys found it useful. Again, I really appreciate it. Check out these other reviews if you're looking for more and I'll see you guys in the next one.